Switched On IT is proudly brought to you by Oz Hosting, Cloud Made Easy. Welcome to Switched On IT. I'm Barry. This is the show where we talk about everything IT. If you're a small business or large business or medium business, one of the things that you will probably be doing, uh, well, I would hope so anyway, is for, is marketing. Uh, and uh, in particular, your digital marketing. Now, we know that uh, one of the important parts of marketing, uh, and increasingly so, is video marketing. Now, today's the ability for businesses like yours today to do video marketing has become phenomenally easier than it used to be. There was a time when uh, video was quite difficult, but with phones today that are built with high-res cameras and the ability to uh, do all kinds of interesting things, the ability even for a small business to use video in their marketing is remarkably easy. Now today, Doug and Ray, who are with us now, and welcome gentlemen. Hello there. Um, now today, Doug and Ray, you are going to talk to us about video marketing and the uh, kinds of uh, platforms, I think, that various types of video marketing can use. So Doug, take us away with this and talk to us about the sorts of businesses that might use video marketing and how they might use it. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Barry. Um, well, last week we were talking about uh, an, edit an editorial cal calendar that would sort of operate right through the year and, and how we can fit in different seasons depending on the type of business that it is, you know, whether it's, uh, um, you know, tax time or, or you know, go, go outdoor camping and, and uh, those sorts of things. So we've got all the different, every business can map out its seasons. And then one of the things that we talked about is just, just how compelling uh, video content can be. So, you know, we're not all fantastic um, producers of, of, you know, uh, or directors of TV commercials, but you're right, Barry, it's become increasingly easier for people to to make video content, and of course, we're all massive consumers of, of video content, um, and we're not just talking about you know video ads for a business. We're talking about, I guess, uh, oftentimes um, video content which which is a little bit more informative about about the business um, and giving somebody that's that's looking for particular products or services a little bit more of an insight. As to you know what that business is able to, to to do for them, and I think that's really important because as much as we might read a uh, a PDF or or a large amount of, of copy um, online, there's nothing like just clicking on a button, clicking on a little arrow, and watching a short little video on what a business does or how to do a particular task, which which leads you to be more engaged with the business. So, um, Ray, I was going to ask you. A, a few things about video marketing. Firstly, um, where does where does video marketing fit into my uh, marketing strategy from from your perspective? And then let's maybe talk talk about a few different types of, of businesses and how they might use um, video as a tool in their marketing programs. Sure. So I'll I'll, I'll preface this with that we're going to talk about video in this episode and the next two episodes and really hone in on marketing strategy now and then in the next two episodes really talk about the types of video that we, that you can produce and do a little bit more deep dive into that topic and then in, in our final episode on on in this at least little mini series uh, talk about really how to get video produced kind of the nuts and bolts pieces of getting compelling video created and so today uh, when we think about video marketing video marketing is kind of a misnomer uh, because in reality uh, we should be thinking about small business video production as a part of every part of the business. Uh, you know, like from the very fact that I record tutorials on camera for my staff so that when I do things, I pull up my screen and I record my screen with audio so that I can show people how to do things as I'm onboarding new employees. And 
that becomes a huge time saver for me in the future because when someone says, I don't know how to do something, I can just refer them to the video, hopefully that they watched already once and now can review again to do that. Then we think about video in the sense of marketing. You talked about video ads, Doug. Uh, but then we have every kind of video that you can produce in a business from a marketing perspective. And we'll talk about that in the next episode. Um, but then we have to go forward and think, well, video itself can be a product. It can, it's not just uh, for marketing. It's actually also a product that can be sold or, you know, in, in essence, um, a product that can be used, say, to uh, fund or generate revenues. So video is this highly flexible format, this highly flexible media that we have to really grapple around in terms of being a business today in, in a digital age and utilizing it for its best effect, which is almost every kind of content. Every kind of content uh, can benefit from having a little bit of video uh, added to it. So the benefits are, are really you know, kind of endless. Uh, but when we think about it, we think about awareness and bringing awareness to our business, you know, using video as an awareness function, uh, being able to put types of video out that uh, build uh, going from me not being, uh, me not knowing you exist as a business to me knowing you exist as a business. And then of course there's consideration, the idea of bringing me not in the, only to awareness, but then to say, okay, among all of my competitors, are you really someone that I want to work with? Or are you someone that I really want to buy from? Uh, then we take that to the sales perspective, taking me over the finish line, so to speak, uh, and closing deals, helping video can help in that category. And uh, as I said before, uh, you know, video itself can be the product, but we can actually take that to a 360 life cycle where it can do customer service. Uh, and, and I tend to think about customer service and customer experience as a part of marketing. And when we think about it, um, it's for being able to upsell and cross-sell when a customer has a problem and they go to your FAQ page, they can see a video that says, hey, we can solve your problem by showing you how to fix it here in this video and uh, come back and buy from us again or come back and, and utilize our services in this other capacity. We have another service line or another product line can that, that can help support your particular issue. Uh, maybe that's uh, a, a product that is a repair item that's gonna, you know, maybe it's a part that needs to be fixed in uh, the thing that you bought from me before. Um, or it's a service line to repair something that you purchased elsewhere. But the idea here is, is that in that whole life cycle, that 360 life cycle of the, of the customer uh, cycle, you can start to see how video can be infused in every single part of it, and it can be utilized for marketing. So I really think about it from, from that perspective. Digital marketing at A1 Super Cheap Tires is paramount. With having local search on board, it's, it's, they're definitely a part of our business. Uh, they are like having a marketing team of your own. It's by far the most important thing to this business and surviving and growing. If you've lost your income or had a change of earning capacity through no fault of your own and are struggling with debt that you can no longer handle, you probably feel a bit like this ant. If the struggle is getting you down and you feel overwhelmed, there is an answer. Central Liaison has helped thousands of people break free of the debt struggle by handling their debt for them. Freeze all interest, stop the harassing calls from the bank and start enjoying life again. Call them today on 0409 344 070 for a confidential obligation free chat about how Central Liaison can help you take your life back. The number again, 0409 344 070. Call them now. Power FM is total entertainment. From the morning drive with Fiona and Jeff to the drive home with Jeff Black. On the weekends, catch the Crazy Kevin Show. Dennis Mitchell's Breakfast with the Beatles, the Semi-Pro Sports Show, and Racing Nation with James O'Shea, plus the music you grew up with. Keep your radio dial locked on Toowoomba's Power FM, celebrating 10 years. You'll find us at 88.0 on the FM dial or online at www.powerfmradio.com.au. When the going gets tough, advertising is a must. Thousands of potential customers make buying decisions every day based on advertising they've seen or heard on radio and television. Are you losing sales because potential customers don't know what you offer? Get your business, product or service in front of thousands of potential customers with a joint advertising package on Power FM and PTV Channel O. 
capture a multimedia audience with our affordable radio, TV, media advertising package. Stay ahead of the pack by contacting Barry on 0431 390 920 or email feedback at ptvchannelo.com or jeff at powerfmtoowoomba at gmail.com. There is the other side of this, which is to really think about your web presence. Uh, I talk about web presence as being all of the digital uh, components of your business that that really, as a whole, become a persona, becomes the web presence, becomes this uh, you know mixture of of you know visual, audio, uh, emotional, social components all together that. Um, that represents the business online, represents them in a digital space, whether that be online or mobile. And video is just such an evocative format. It's capable of really expressing so much of the personality of the business, uh, many times because it's a lot of people in the business who are talking directly to the consumer. So when we think about it, Doug, from that perspective, you can see how really holistic video is. And um, as now Barry and you have both noted, it's really quite simple to generate video content. Uh, in, it doesn't need to be high caliber, highly professional content in order to be competent uh, content that is useful and fruitful for the business to be able to uh, market itself. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, it's, it's, there are so many different, uh, 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 I guess, use cases for, for, for video. Um, one of the things that we talked about just coming into this was, was let's, let's, uh, imagine, let's postulate a couple of different types of, of businesses and talk talk about how they might use video and and the the platform that they might then, um, in a sense, publish their, their video through. So uh, let, let's take a couple of examples. If if if, if our client was a, um, a a panel repair shop, you know, a, a smash repairs um, automotive business, um, what? Where do you see a role for, for video in that in that business? In in terms of oh gosh any type of role yeah customer service yeah advertising yeah give me some comfort make There's me so many comfort. so many areas yeah so let's let's take it uh, around the entire life cycle uh, customer life cycle at the very beginning of the journey. Uh, you know, the customer is going to be interested in learning about uh, certain types of things when it comes to their car. Maybe they don't know what a carburetor is. Um, maybe they don't know what, you know, the, the ignition is. They don't know these other parts. And what this particular automotive shop can do is on Instagram or on YouTube, uh, two primary areas where people are searching for that kind of content, they can be consistently putting out little tutorials that just really explains parts of the vehicle, you know, like, I know my car has a carburetor. Where is it? I couldn't tell you. So, uh, you know, it would be really helpful that if I watched an automotive repair shop that was local to me uh, putting out this content, he's or she is in essence educating me about my vehicle. And that's really helpful because then I can more easily identify, you know what, I watched such and such's video and the carburetor sounds a little funky. Uh, you know, it's making that sound that they told me is probably a problem and I should go take that in before it gets worse. And so not only are they providing me a service, but they're actually building value right up front so that I'm more likely to use them. So that's that's in a in more of an awareness and consideration campaign uh, that blends the two of them because if they optimize for local, I'm gonna find them because I'm looking for that content. And if they want to be able to really engage people, they might put out a small scale video ad campaign and it, they don't have to do anything more than just pull out clips, snippets of the videos they're already doing and showing people, hey, by the way, we exist. And this is the type of video that we put out. We put out these short explainer videos that covers what it is that we, you know, we do at our repair shop. But more importantly, how you identify when something is going wrong uh, for your cars so that you can kind of, uh, you know, stem the damage and come to us before the car breaks down completely uh, and we can go ahead and repair it. So something as simple as that. Of course, then there is the idea that they can do longer videos and those longer form videos could be on IGTV, they could be on YouTube, they could be on Vimeo, they could be on a number of different platforms uh, and then embedded on their own website. And this is a kind of an added value for their customers. And so it doesn't matter that people who are not their customers will watch these videos, ignore those people. 
but for their customers, they're going to take those videos that they're hosting elsewhere and embed them on their own website and now provide detailed instructions for things that me as a car owner, I can go ahead and do myself in furtherance of making my life easier, right? So it may be simple things like uh, topping off my fluids or, you know, things of that nature that um, you're not going to go to the re repair shop to uh, refill your, uh, your, your uh, uh, wiper uh, fluid. You know, that, that's, you know, you want to swap it out for um, all weather concern. You may decide, uh, you know, in the spring you're going to put in different fluid than you're going to put in the winter, which is going to have uh, a higher freezing point or a lower freezing point, whichever the one is that makes it not freeze. Uh, <laughs> um, you're going to buy that liquid and replace it. So having videos on the automotive website that covers that for me is a value add as a customer. And then you can send me an email, you know, sometime in September, same video every year that just basically covers, hey, here goes how you do that thing that's going to help maintain your vehicle over the course of the winter, over the course of the summer, and so on and so forth. So high, high uh, extreme weather uh, type situations. Uh, you might even have some stuff that, hey, if you're in a, a coastal area with uh, maybe some other extreme weather events, uh, this is how you prepare your car for, uh, from, for, for snow, swapping out. Uh, tires or putting on snow chains, uh, those kinds of things. And you have all kinds of options for being able to put what would be um, value add video onto your site that in essence reduces the number of customer service calls but still keeps the relationship between you and the customer very strong because seeing you, the, the repair mechanic, uh, walking me through these videos, I have the same relationship with you uh, as I would in real life. I know you, you're, you're providing me this content, and it's establishing and maintaining that relationship uh, in a video uh, capacity. Uh, and then, of course, you know, as I said before, you, we're, we're going to have potentially some FAQ videos uh, for maintaining particular parts of the car. Say, I have a, a particular make and model of a vehicle. And uh, when that make and model of the vehicle is put behind, say, a little uh, password protected area of the website, and you can say, here goes for your make and model, this is how you fix these things. And so uh, if you stay with me uh, for you know, all of your car needs, um, when you have a problem, just come into this little portal and I will show you how to repair these little things uh, that you know, just keep it maintained. Maybe it's just something simple that needs to be done. Uh, but there are lots of ways in which you can use that to be able to maintain kind of a database, a repository of things that, that the repair shop is not going to necessarily make money on by you coming to them, uh, but is going to maintain a strong relationship that when something does go wrong with the car, you're not even going to think about which repair shop to go to because this particular repair shop is providing you with all of these other video-focused uh, value adds as well as kind of maintenance functions that are just being provided to you over time. So that's kind of like one general idea in terms of if it was an automotive repair shop, just the types of videos that come to mind that could be helpful for marketing. Ray, yeah. um, earlier in uh, when you first started talking about this, you were um, uh, talking about questions about the carburetor and uh, the ignition. And uh, I'd like to just say that if you've got a problem with the ignition, you're in real trouble because you're <laughs> certainly not going to be able to get to the repair shop, so you'll need those videos. Yes, and absolutely, I, I, the absolutely. Other, the, the other comment, I thought, I thought you were going to mention this as well, Barry, that these days where cars, so many cars are fuel injected, very, very few. Uh, have carburetors. Have a carburetor, yes. <laughs> yeah, but we yeah. Get, well, my, my <laughs> first car, my first car did have a carburetor, so uh, you know it is what it is. Uh, I do know what a carburetor is and mixes the air and the, the fuel, but uh, you know it's one of those things where if you don't know it, you don't know it, and if you have uh, you know if you have a fuel injection system, you have a fuel injection system. But um, you know a lot of people don't understand the mechanics of these these types of vehicles, and that's one of those cases where that's a lot of different types of businesses, right? Like mm. most people uh, watching are not lawyers. Most people watching are not accountants. Uh, most people watching are, are not bakers. Um, you know, like you may be one, but when you think about everybody else who comes to your shop, they're not experts in your world. And what you think is simple and potentially mundane for someone to know about is a, is a lifesaver for somebody else. That's really the point here, right? Is that if you are trying to help someone out, by providing a baseline of information that they can come to, video is always a great avenue for being able to do that. And it just gives you a foundation 
to be able to direct people to to get that information. It also gives a foundation for people to find you and access that information and then establish a relationship to create and then establish a relationship with you because that's what it is what, what it's all about digital experiences are about creating real life experiences right they shouldn't diminish the relationship they should increase and enhance the relationship and if they're not enhancing in real life activities then the video is all but useless i think about that in terms of all activities online if your activities online are not increasing in real life value IRL value, as they say, um, in real life value, uh, then then it has no value to me in terms of marketing uh, in the business. So what you need to be thinking about is what types of videos can you create? And in not just one off video, you know, one single video you're putting on your website, but how are how is video throughout the life cycle of the customer? What are all the types of videos that need to be created? on an ongoing basis or potentially, you know, you're going to create a library that's going to be kind of mostly one off. You'll be adding things on occasion. Uh, but then, you know, in your awareness campaigns, those videos are going to be produced on a regular basis and will be a little bit hopefully shorter, uh, a little bit pithier and get people in engaged in getting to know you uh, before they get to may say be maybe a, a longer form video that's going to go into more depth and so on and so forth. So just thinking about the video throughout the entire customer journey so that you're able to start thinking uh, what is the real strategy in play? Ray, uh, just another uh, comment, uh, if I can. You talked about making pithy videos. One of the uh, one of the things that, uh, and of course, uh, we're in video space. I guess you'd say almost exclusively, uh, apart from the radio station. But uh, one of the things that is a mistake that I see frequently that video makers that are making the sorts of videos you're talking about uh, do, uh, and you talked earlier about uh, making explanatory videos. Now, uh, one, of the, one of the mistakes that is frequently made, and it, it's something that really gets up my nose a little, uh, is that somebody will make, uh, if, I'm, if I'm looking for a video to tell me the solution to a problem or uh, to tell me how to do something, the most annoying thing is to have three or four minutes before we actually get to that of them saying, well, now this video is going to be about this and, and here's all the information and, uh, and you're looking at this uh, video from this particular provider and, and they go through all of this great big long introduction before they actually get to tell you about it and people's attention span will often have them say, oh, I can't be bothered listening to any more of this, I'll go somewhere else. Yeah, I think I think there's a balance. You need to be able to have some kind of preamble so that you're not just going directly into the material, sure. uh, but segueing people from you know introduction of the topic to actually showing them. Uh, but there's kind of a, a a very narrow band between what is useful to then what is becomes annoying, uh, and and I I've, I've yeah. seen them all. So yes, yeah. yes. Right. But that's a that's a really great point you make there, Barry. Because um, I I think we all uh, use the skip ad option as soon as we can when we're there to see particular <laughs> yes. content that front ended with a with a with an ad. We we just sort of you know do other things, and as soon as it, the skip ad button comes up and and, and is able to be uh, that ad's able to be skipped, we use it, and we also use the slide bar. Um, to to sort of go back and forth through the content. So so to the, to the extent that you actually build um, you know content at the front of the video before you really get into the guts of the the question that somebody is uh, you know the problem they're trying to solve the itch they're trying to scratch um, you, you may as well get into it as, as quickly as you possibly can, which I, I think maybe suggests um, that you should have lots of short videos rather than any videos that try and deal with with multiple, um, you know, issues or, or pieces of, of subject matter, mm. um, and the the other thing about that, you know, just sort of staying on the on the example of a automotive or panel shop or something like that. Certainly in Australia, and I remember, you know, when I was living in the states, you know, you do have to have your cars get a roadworthy certificate of some sort on a regular basis in Australia. It's the the roadworthy certificate. The inspection is required every year, and it would be very, very easy for all the automotive outlets that do those inspections to have little videos 
on the different things that they do. You know, I'm checking for, you know, um, tire tire wear and, and how do they actually check that? What is the process by which they check the depth of the tread on the tire? Um, what about what about the brakes? What about the steering? What about um, you know the roadworthiness of the actual body of the car? You know, how do you deal with with rust spots? What are the cost implications? If I've got a tiny rust spot on the car, should I really consider getting the uh, the panel shop, for example, to to fix that? Is it going to cost me a lot more in the future? Um, if I've got shopping trolley dents in some of my doors, is there a quick and easy solution to um, to get rid of those? If I've got a graze on the um, you know on the on the wheel rim itself, you know these days when we've all got nice rims on our cars, um, it's pretty easy to graze them against the, uh, the, the the curb. And then how do you fix those? There's just so many different um, videos, and I'm guessing that in that situation, mostly they would go up on on YouTube and be referenced on our uh, our business's website, so that if I'm the potential customer coming up for car inspection time. I can go on the website, I can actually get a great idea of not only what they're going to do in the inspection, but any other little jobs that, that they might recommend as, as part of that, that, that have got, might, might not have anything to do with the roadworthiness of the car, but just little niggling things that, that, um, that I could probably get done, which for them are just a, a, you know, a revenue add and a, and, a, and a relationship builder as well. Absolutely. So what's our next business that we want to talk about? Uh, how about a, a uh, because I've got absolutely no use for a business like this, obviously, how about a hair salon? <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, in a hair, yeah, so, so in, a, in, a, in, a, um, in a hair salon environment, you're, you're definitely going to have a wide variety of uh, different types of content that probably are going to have some video on Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest is starting to elevate uh, video content as a content type in their platform. They just made some underlying uh, server-based changes so that they don't have to interrupt the user experience uh, while still using the algorithm to surface, most likely, more video. And so Pinterest is definitely going to be an area. You, know, you have a high affluent uh, female population on Pinterest, and uh, they're the predominant you know, market for hair salons. Uh, then you have Instagram. Instagram is going to be, again, Instagram stories, those videos in the Instagram stories. You might even have the, um, uh, on at least on the iPhone, I'm, I'm not quite sure how you do it on the Android. I think you could do it on the Android as a time lapse, but you could do these time lapse videos. And this is one of those cases where you can't give away uh, enough in a hair salon environment, right? Like, I am never going to, if I ever decided to color my gray hair, uh, <laughs> I would never do it myself. I would not trust myself to do it. I would not want to do it by myself. Um, I would go to a hair salon. And so if a hair salon was just showing their techniques for being able to bring a customer from start to finish in that environment, you could do time-lapse videos uh, which, you know, uh, hair coloring can take, you know, an hour, several hours, uh, especially for um, a large head of hair. Uh, that can be a, that can be a, a half a day project, right? Um, you know, but by, by the time you've, you've styled it and colored it and so on and so forth. Um, it'd be really fun to actually, if you're with your customer's uh, permission, uh, to do these types of uh, of time lapse videos and showing the transformation, and uh, you see these makeover videos and other kinds of shows that all ar are all around makeovers. And in essence, it's kind of entertainment, but it's also showing the expertise of the stylists. And so that's part of the of the job of of these types of in essence video stories. And it gives the, you the ability. Now you could of course do this by Photographs. You could take a bunch of photographs and upload all the photographs as a story, that kind of thing. It's just not as compelling as having a video that shows the different aspects of it. So you could do the time lapse, or you could do, say, uh, 10 seconds of video um, at the start, 10 seconds every, say, uh, 15 or 30 minutes, and uh, you know, have have a stylist uh, who's not doesn't have a client at that at that time. Maybe record the video every every uh, you know half hour or so, every 15 minutes, and then you can you can take those culmination of videos and upload them as uh, Instagram stories, as you know Instagram story videos. And now what you have is this wonderful kind of transformation, and people get engaged in that, and then of course they see themselves in the customer's chair. Um, wanting to have the same procedures done. They want to have the same style. Maybe they want a different style, but they now feel much more uh, 
they feel closer to you. They feel more like you're competent in that sense. So that is definitely something that I would think about is having uh, video posts as well as video stories that show the transformation. It's nothing like seeing the work being done, right? There's a there's a skillsmanship, a craftsmanship, uh, or craftspersonship uh, nowadays um, to kind of consider how that whole process takes place. Um, then, of course, just like the automotive shop, there are all of those issues of maintenance, right? You get your hair colored, you leave the salon, and uh, and now there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to do to maintain and care for your hair between each treatment. What do you do? How do you do that? Well, it'd be really great if the salon then created a, a playlist on their YouTube channel or a highlights reel on their uh, Instagram profile or a section in, in their Facebook page and just, col just collected together all of the various, pro maybe the products they sell, right? Because many, many salons sell specific products. And so using their product lines, showing the customer how to care for their hair between visits. And voila, you have this wonderful repository, this wonderful library of content now that customers can feel confident in being able to uh, deal with. And you know, of course, there's like the basic things about, oh, you know, I need to uh, maybe clean up the sideburns and, and so on and so forth, at least for, for guys. Uh, you know, you have to do that when you're, when you're shaving or, or whatnot. And uh, maybe, you know, not all of us can uh, do it well. Uh, <laughs> and so may maybe the video channel can provide a little bit of uh, of guidance, a few tips for being able to say, okay, well, you know, if you're having some trouble making sure you get your sideburns lined up properly, here go some things you can do. Uh, and this, again, it's just about providing value in and along the that customer journey, that customer life cycle, so that people feel like, okay, if I'm going to choose between multiple hair salons, uh, why would I choose yours over mine? And that ends up being top of mindness. That is keeping me, keeping you top of mind in top of mind when I think, you know what, I need a haircut. Uh, which barber should I go to? Which which hair salon should I go to? And if you continually are giving me value by providing me this video content, I'm naturally going to choose you over others if I feel like you're doing a competent job. And price point becomes less of an issue. And that's part of the issue here too. Is that what we want to do is we want to provide enough value in the video content, that price is not the main criteria. It's the value that you're providing me as a provider. It's establishing that relationship and continually providing me value. And then, yeah, sure, you might be 20 bucks more, uh, you know, maybe $40 more than uh, another salon, but I know that you're providing me ongoing value, and that's gonna be the reason I uh, establish and maintain that relationship. Power FM is total entertainment. From the morning drive with Fiona and Jeff to the drive home with Jeff Black. On the weekends, catch the Crazy Kevin Show, Dennis Mitchell's Breakfast with the Beatles, the Semi-Pro Sports Show, and Racing Nation with James O'Shea, plus the music you grew up with. Keep your radio dial locked on Toowoomba's Power FM, celebrating 10 years. You'll find us at 88.0 on the FM dial or online at www.powerfmradio.com.au. Oz Hosting is proud to support Switched On IT in bringing practical help to Australian businesses. We're talking to literally hundreds of businesses every day about their IT services, how to make them more efficient, how to make their businesses more efficient and how to protect their valuable data. If you'd like your IT services securely hosted right here in Australia and expertly managed, talk to Oz Hosting. Mind Body Soul with Perth based international speaker and influencer Gwenda Smith. Every week we explore the world of business and personal development with an exciting new format with some of the world's leading experts on productivity, mindfulness, sales success, personal development, and more every Wednesday night at 7 pm. Only on ptvchannelo.com or the PTV Channel O app. PTV Channel O, discover a whole new world of entertainment. Doug, um, uh, do you prefer to go and have your hair coloured in the salon, or do you like to do it yourself? Oh, well, I, I favour skin tone, so um, <laughs> I, I, I generally do that myself. Uh, but it's some, some great points you make there about the uh, about the hair salon and, and the level of engagement there, and and. Um, you know, there's so many different processes that exist in a hair salon, whether it's uh, you know the 
the, the, the colouring process. It's also people presenting with uh, extremely damaged hair oftentimes um, and getting that mm-hmm. back into some kind of um, acceptable state to, for, for the customer. And, and they all would make really great stories. So, and, and so the publishing formats that you mentioned there, Ray, you were talking about Pinterest, Instagram, um, any others that you can you can think of to you know to, to publish to? Well, face, Facebook and, and YouTube. It, it just depends upon where your audience is, um, and that would dictate where you would choose to to publish the video. And the other side mm-hmm. is where you want your customers to be coming from. You know, many times what happens is uh, a business will say, "Oh, this is our market, and this is where our market is," uh, but they're not the ideal customers. And so what you need to do is not scrap it because it it's where your current customers are, but you can put say 20% of your time into another platform and start to grow that platform if you know that that's where your your ideal customers are going to be coming from. There's no reason why you wouldn't start doing that kind of work uh, to start bringing in the ideal customers or a new service line, for example. So say uh, your salon catered to predominantly women, but you started to and, and want to bring more men into the salon. Well, you're not going to do the same types of marketing in the same places uh, that you would uh, for women that you would do for men. Uh, and so that might mean you go on some uh, some podcasts that where there's a predominantly male audience um, and maybe those podcasts talk about style and fashion and so on and so forth. And now you can talk about, uh, you know, hair and, and, uh, and you know, cosmetic issues as being a part of that conversation. Um, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the goal is to be able to think about, well, if we're really trying to expand the business, uh, you know, and we're only catering to 50% of the people on the planet, uh, let's cater to the other 50% and see how we can grow. Uh, believe you me, there's a lot of room for growth in the, in the, in the men's fashion world, uh, certainly in the men's hair, hair world. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, you have, you have this ability to start thinking beyond just um, we're going to put out this uh, video on this platform because that's where our people are. Think also about where you want your people to be coming from, and also is that your your whole target market, and do you have these niches that could potentially be coming in from different avenues, and then what type of content do you create for them? Because that's going to be a different strategy for bringing those people in and making them making them aware of you versus your current market that already knows you exist, that maybe has some preconceived notions about you and the services you provide. If if that other market has other preconceived notions of you, then you need to overcome those preconceived notions if they're negative and then play on the preconceived notions that are positive and then bring them to you for awareness purposes and then give them some kind of carrot uh, to engage with you that first time and get them to closer to the retail traffic that you're looking for in the hair salon example. Right. And look, I think we've got time for one more. So we've been dealing with... Um, you know, very sort of tangible, if you like, uh, considerations or, or products and services. Um, what about if if uh, the business that we're we're helping is is actually in the the, the business of content um, creation? Let's say they're a videographer or or uh, you know a documentary filmmaker or somebody like that. Um, is 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 YouTube the, the publishing format or um, Pinterest or you know? Where and how would they effectively use video since it is actually their own product itself? Yeah, so it just depends on the level of that particular, say, the videographer. Uh, if, if a videographer is doing different types of video, say, documentary film or something that's a little bit more artful, uh, there are platforms dedicated to that. I mean, Vimeo by itself stands as kind of the artist's platform, you know, where, where artists go to put their video. Uh, they've kind of tried to set themselves apart in that, in that way. Uh, but you know, think about a videographer is probably not different than um, any other type of business, in the, at least a service business, in the way in which they present their product. In the hair salon style, for example, in the hair salon example that we were talking about, what I was really saying was show your customer. Show your customer uh, enjoying and experiencing your service. And in essence, that's what videographers should do as well. In, in essence, they should take their portfolio and then start clipping it up, you know, small segments of their work is the best demonstration of their skills. And so if they're able to go out there and put out uh, small clips of their videos and their work and showing how their work uh, creates a uh, compelling video. We'll talk about that, you know, in part three. Uh, but, you know, if they can show that, that's really going to be the best sales for them is showing their product 
their final their end product in small bits uh, so that people can see that and, and maybe if the videos are, are you know they have their clients permission they can show their clients entire videos in a larger portfolio uh, but you know just being able to see what it is and how it is they do their their work I think uh, uh, one of the really interesting things is uh, the Daily Show with Trevor Noah. It has a playlist called the Between the Scenes, and all they are are these interim segments between uh, interviews and uh, Trevor Noah doing the news, right? So basically, the in-between pieces between uh, segments, and Between the Scenes sometimes have uh, candid, uh, you know, conversations between. Trevor and the audience, uh, maybe it's between Trevor and the interviewee, and or just little things like that, uh, where they're kind of off the cuff, you know, comments and, and th those kinds of things, genuine and authentic moments with the audience. And those are some of the most highly engaging videos, most highly engaged uh, pieces of content that are on the channel because it's a different it's it's a different way to see uh, the 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 use of video. Right? It's not always about the refined, perfect video. It's sometimes about the things that we say in between. Right? If if there's a if there's an opportunity for you to be able to capture this other footage as a videographer, you can then use that footage as a mechanism for being able to show that hey, being a videographer means not just seeing not just the stuff you see on the front end, but there's all that stuff on the back end that makes the front end stuff look good that makes it look competent and makes it look um, so wonderful on the front end. And that can be really useful and interesting. I think it would be very interesting to me to see kind of behind the scenes of a videographer's life. And seeing some of that behind the scenes video, I think it'd be very useful for being able to understand, you know what, being a videographer is not easy. You know, and uh, and you have to be a certain type of person to be able to do videography. And so that as a as a as a as a testament to you're the right person for me to hire to do that work, uh, it can be very very uh, useful. So I, I see it from from that perspective. Of course, you know, there's uh, if you're if you're that type of videographer who wants to educate an audience about how to how to do video and how to create video, that may be useful. But I think for most videographers, they've got to focus on getting their next project and their next video project. So doing a lot of educational video is actually not very useful to videographers. I would I would imagine that something like a vlog where you're kind of cataloging your videographer's life behind behind the scenes kind of things and between the scenes uh, and then and then showing a portfolio of, of client clips, those end up being most useful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's terrific. Well that's probably all the examples we've got um, time for. Um, but I think it's really interesting just to 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 cover off firstly, you know, we've talked a lot about the different types of content different businesses uh, could could bring in to create you know quite compelling video footage and and really there's there's no end to that and we've covered off the different platforms that people are going to use whether it's going to be Facebook uh, Pinterest Instagram YouTube Vimeo and so on so um, I'm really looking forward to, to next week when we might dig in a little bit more deeply into um, just the actual video production process and some of the tips and hints there. Um, I was going to say, Barry, have you got any any further questions for us on on uh, video marketing? Um, <clears throat> no, I haven't got any questions. Um, uh, I was thinking as uh, Ray was talking, uh, and he actually alluded to this right at the end there. Uh, prior to the uh, um, use of video and the ease of being able to use video. If we go back to uh, your example, uh, Ray, of the uh, videographer, before they were putting up lots of video, they would make a portfolio, um, which would just be a portfolio of pictures of what they're doing. So this is basically the same thing. It's a portfolio, but with video, right? Exactly, exactly. And you don't have to start with a lot. You know, most videographers, uh, maybe in, in university or otherwise, uh, built a portfolio so that they would have one to put up on their site. Uh, some don't have a lot of portfolio work, and, and that's okay. Uh, the, the point is to start getting the work under your belt so you can start getting those kinds of, of portfolio pieces. That may mean uh, donating some time to have some projects done so that you can build a portfolio. Uh, again, if you didn't get that in university, then you, you want to get that you know now. Uh, and that means most likely giving your time to be able to get some of this stuff done and building a portfolio. So I mm -hmm. think most 
most businesses, uh, most organizations or otherwise, are not going to hire a videographer without seeing their work in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so you want to really um, build that portfolio. So yes, Barry, you, it's it's almost identical in the sense that you're building this kind of video portfolio so that people can see what it is you have to offer. You know, style is a big part of of many creative professionals. Whether you're a portrait photographer, a uh, you know someone who does murals, uh, someone who is a musician or otherwise, people are looking for a particular type of style. And so if you don't fit their style, that's okay. You know, I've worked with many graphic designers over the years who have different styles. And mm. uh, I, I work with those graphic designers, again, that have my style, and uh, and I don't work with the ones who don't have my style, right? And that's just <laughs> the nature of it's – a, it's a subjective – you know, it's not that they're bad. You know, some of them are very talented. Uh, sure. But if their style of graphic design is uh, sketch art, you know, like uh, Gary Larson style comedy, uh, that's not going to be the type of art I'm looking for in my business. So, mm. you know, it's just a matter of choosing, the, and it's not that it's bad, the, you know, if you ran a, a children's daycare, uh, maybe that type of art would really make a lot of sense for you. So we just have to make choices, and in videography, photography, any of, the, any of those, um, you're, you're choosing for style. And so remember to represent your business properly in that way, that when you're especially doing video, it's very, very easily seen the type of style. You know, if you're doing, um, you know, you know, broad, you know, um, what's the name of the the documentary filmmaker? Um, he has his own style of film, uh, but you know, like that kind of film where you're doing these big, broad panoramas and these these movements and whatnot. That's a type of film, you know, and uh, and 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 that style is not going to be for everybody. So we really do need to make sure that we're putting up portfolios that represent our work. Don't try to put up work that that you don't do, uh, because yeah. then you're obviously going to uh, send a message. And I would say that across the board. I mean, remember that when you do videos, uh, especially when you're thinking about strategy, don't start doing cartoon explainer videos uh, if you're a mortuary. Right, like you know, <laughs> people don't want comedy when it comes to their to their you know funeral home. Um, be appropriate to the type of business you're running, um, and and maybe you're a funeral director who has a great sense of humor, um, but unfortunately you're just not going to be able to use it in your videos, right? You know, you have yes. to be appropriate to the type of video, um, and that also means that if you're um, say a lawyer or a doctor or otherwise, um, being professional and even some humor can be helpful. And I, I'm not saying that it can't be done, um, but just understand that the type of video and the tenor and style uh, and the cadence of the video it should match the um, the type of work that the type of customer you're trying to reach at that time. Sure. Okay. Um, we're going to leave it there uh, today, gentlemen. That's been a uh, uh, really good <coughs> overview of the sorts of businesses that might use uh, video. Uh, of course, there are many others. We've only uh, touched on a few of them. But uh, thank you for your time today, and we will look forward uh, now. In the next session, Ray, we are talking about all the various types of video. We're going to talk about, you know, what culminates from explainer videos to landing page videos uh, to all the various other types of videos and the types of content you can generate as a business. Terrific. All right. Thank you for your time, Ray Sidney Smith and Doug Endersby. We'll catch you again next week. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Barry. This has been Switched on IT. Uh, you have been watching a session which is part of a three-part series talking about video and uh, video marketing and making videos. Um, uh, if there's something from today's session that has uh, switched on a light or uh, raised a question, please get in touch with us. Our email address is feedback at ptvchannelo.com or send us a message on our website contact page. Uh, if there's something that you would like Doug and Ray to touch on particularly, tell us about that as well. If there are questions you've got about making video, uh, again, get in touch with us. Uh, this has been Barry for Switched on IT. We will see you again next week. <laughs> <laughs>